I just saw an ad for Oreos. So I just got some Oreos, so the ad came after. But it has me wondering, did it actually come before? Like, did I see it before? And that's why I got Oreos? I think I just was walking down the aisle and saw Oreos, but man, who knows? They're in your head. Uh, everything was good. Still hot on mic, it's so weird. Okay, whatever, it's fine. There we are, how about that? Hello folks, welcome to the stream. Uh, welcome to your wonderful evening. Hope it's a good one. Uh, it's Friday here. Hope the workday is finished for you and you've gotten uh, chilled out and relaxed a little bit. Not going to do too much intense stuff on this one. Just kind of chill out. Had a good good, good week working now. Just kind of chill out a little bit. I may cut some gifts later too. Um, it's kind of packing that. But I'm kind of digging this vibe of... Um, our little video player here. Let me close this. Oh, actually, you know what I should do real quick. So I want to do I want to do a couple things. Thing one. This is still running. Did I post? Uh, whatever. I got a bunch of drafts I need to deal with. Okay, so that's out there. Here, making ISO date. I want to see. I wrote this. So I was messing with ISO dates and date times and whatever and I had some snippets and I started to write them up and I think this is okay because this is kind of walking you through it I'm trying to figure out like where the level is like this took this was a few hours um but I'm trying to figure out what the level is of do you just post a snippet or do you want to explain it or whatever so I'm, this one I went a little farther but I think I'm going to maybe back off of this and just post some snippets out there uh I like this this idea that some people have been talking about about like the your web garden um, and so I've, I've been working a little bit on my NV alt stuff about trying to figure out how to actually push snippets out in a more automatic way. Um, but before I get there, I'm thinking about doing this and I, I'd written it up as a story, but I actually put the, the TLDR up top, like, here's how you do it. Um, so I don't know. I need to, I need to figure that out. But the other thing I want to do first is I don't have Trove mounted. Let me get something mounted here real quick. Hang on one second. I don't think it matters if you see this, but I don't know what it shows. It did not matter. Uh, I'm glad I turned that off. Should turn that back on. Hey, now you can see again. Um, so I've got all this music that I pulled down from YouTube that they give as a free library. Um, also, it's this UI is not good. Like, here's the only little indication down here that this thing's spinning. Like, it's going over the NAS or whatever. Like, Apple really, it should have really something big in the middle saying like, hey, spinning icon here. Um, I'm really surprised it doesn't do that. But anyways, here's all the songs we got. So I've got my automated process that's building. This is going to be the food that goes in the engine that builds all the music videos. This is the music for all the music videos. Um, the video, of course, coming from NASA. But what I want to do is update all these files to not have spaces in them. Um, and I, I wrote a... Uh, I wrote a little command. Nope. Oh, uh, STFs. Nope. Database functions. That's what it is. I don't remember what the command was. Oh, that's going to be super small for you. I did not properly set this one up. So I think this goes to 15 and this goes to 1.3. Stand by, we'll bring that back so you can actually see what it is. There you go. Yeah, that's not bad. How many lines is that? 30 lines plus a little bit? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, so I wrote a command. Part of my problem with the commands is I don't remember all of them. RZ, reload ZSH, right? Okay, cool. 
Sublime Text Launchpad, Sublime Text Z. I thought that's what I just did. Didn't work. Uh, where is my... Well, I thought I wrote one. Did I dream it? Sublime text, sublime text. Hugo, reload. Print working, or yeah. Copy the working directory. Hugo serve for the future. Hugo serve for now. Make a Hugo new post. Hugo deploy force. Hugo deploy. Okay, what did I do with it? Hang on a second. Uh, nope, not in there. I swear. What is happening? Um, I'm just gonna keep this. I'm just. I'm digging around in my directories here, so bear with me a second. The what is going on? Updated October twenty seventh. That's about when it, I did it. Git status. Git diff. Nope. Maybe I put it in and took it back out. So what I've got, or what I did, or what I thought I did, was made a command that let you... Oops. Where'd it go? Rename files. Lowercase. And without spaces in them. Oh, actually, hang on, let me do one other thing. I need to add something new to my mix of... So I've got a... Uh... Oops. Sorry, right, bear with me. I will add this to my notes of the things to do shortly. Actually, we're just gonna put it in place right now. Uh, no, we're not, we're gonna add it to the notes. Getting off to a raging start right now. So, checklist. So, that NVL, the app that I use, that I call my grimoire, my book of magic, um, is where I put everything. Uh, and it's fine when it's just me looking at it because like if I accidentally like bring up work stuff because I've got work you know notes and documentation on there and stuff like there's no passwords or anything like that but there's just like you know work stuff I don't want to flash that on screen wouldn't actually be that big a deal but there's the principle involved so I've got commands that I wrote that move so NVALD is basically just a stack of text files so I've got commands that I wrote that just move all of my work-related stuff into an archive while I'm on stream, and then another command that moves it all back in. And that's new. I, had, I hadn't really thought all the way through how that all was working. I had actually just manually moved it and done all this stuff. So I just need to actually have this reminder in my checklist to say, hey, move stuff out of Grimoire. Got it. And then 
Next up that I'll do is when I'm actually working on it next time, I'll throw it in Keyboard Maestro, which is where I've got a command that I hit and it just does my stream prep for me as, as much as it can. Uh, and I'll just put it in there. So that way when I run my stream prep command, it just moves everything out and then I don't have to worry about it. Um, and then another command later is like click and move it back in. Um, it's also good. I'm using that for more than just the, um, uh, the work stuff or the archive stuff or whatever, because like I've, I've actually got so many files now I've got, I think it's like 6,000 files that I've got because in Vault they're all individual text files or each page is an individual text file. I, it actually is causing performance issues in NV alt. Like it's just, it struggles a little bit because there's so many files it still does fantastic. I'm not, that's not a knock in any way, form or fashion, but like, I'm also using that same feature to move stuff out that I'm not actively working on. Like I'm not working on Ansible right now, so I can move all those files out. Like that's cool. No problem. Um, so I just want to have that note in there. So that notes in there. So there we go. So that's what that's all about. But I really, and that's why it's saying, Hey, rename all that stuff or whatever. Um, the, uh, Closing help. Yeah, so in the command, I will close it. This is where I copy the commands from, right? So it's my data. So it was like data dash is some of my work stuff and some of my archive stuff and some of my personal stuff that just needs to get out. Uh, that's one of them. Uh, so hopefully there's nothing else in there. Um, I will keep an eye out for that. But so find CLI, CLI find rename. No. How about dash Z? Because it was definitely unzip multiple files, extract file directory node, conditional. Yeah, so this is true if the string is zero, right? I really am at a loss. Did I put that in PyCharm? File move test, wait a minute. Nope. I don't know what I did. I wrote it. I wrote a first version of it that lowercased everything and did it. Like, I know I did this. That's so weird. I can't think of where else it would be. Guess I get to learn it again. All right, so. All right, let's, let's try it again. Um, so what I'm looking to do, and okay, we're gonna do this this way. Um, actually, hang on a second. Let me make sure it's not. Browser clean sleep, no. Example file storage, Django for beginners. FMPEG, page watcher, YouTube runner, nope. All right, we're gonna build one though. So dev, oh, uh, sorry, get repos. Yep, nothing to those. Get init, bear, uh, what do you wanna call this one? Um, Naming is hard. CLI. I just call it snake case names. All right, get clone. Get the uh, repos. Snake case names. Uh, 
cool. Um, and, you know, and so this is like one of those weird ones. I, I'm actually going to try and test this a little bit. Not that that's weird, but it's like it's a bash function. So I'm not exactly sure how to do that. So this is going to be bumping around a little bit. Um, wait a minute. Hey, Velcro, what's up? I think I might be losing my mind. I completely lost a file that I was thought that I had or a function that I thought that I had and it's nowhere to be found. So. Oh, that feels like me right now. Let's see. All right, screw it. We're just going to start over. Um, so I guess the let's try. Let's do this in code. I haven't done this in. I haven't used VS Code much. Let's try that. All right, open folder. Snake case names. Because I can actually make this its own thing, right? New file. Uh, echo here, whatever. Traditional hello world, whatever. Oh yeah, Django. It's back here somewhere. Um, I'm doing uh, Django's for beginners, Django for beginners, um, but haven't. I'm still working my way through it. Uh, it's what I'm going to use to replace my little, uh, to this little tool site that I've got with my little links and whatever, my GIFs and all this other crap. Uh, I'm going to, that's a bunch of PHP pages right now. So I'm going to move that to Django. Um, I'm in progress of doing that. Um, but I want to get, make a little more progress on that video thing that you saw. And also, um, what's the other thing? Uh, oh yeah, just this little thing that I'm trying to write right now, this function, so that I can actually do some of the video stuff, basically. Um, it's been on my list for a little bit. But yeah, Django's in play, 100%. Um, all right, what's the right way to do this? Test arena. And then... Test runner.py. How about that? User bin environment Python. What the hell just happened? Okay, that's interesting. Oh, it's all Python. And yeah, I don't know about this VS Code stuff. I got used to it. Also, I need to play with Jupyter Notebooks at some point. If I create one, what does it do? Is it coming here? Didn't do anything. All right, screw you. Uh, okay, so what's going to be the way to test this? Um, I mean, I might as well see if I can test it with... So I'm not, I'm not actually testing Python code. I'm testing Bash. But I'm, I'll just use Python to run it, to like set it up and then run and see what happens. Um, snake name snake case name test unit test test case so i'm getting a weird echo hello hello nope somewhere definitely in here something's echoing um whatever so if name main Unit test, main, go. So how do we run stuff in here? Is there a hotkey for it? What, what's the hotkey? Oh, F5? I got to hit F5? That sucks. Also, because I don't have a function key set up. Control R doesn't work? Uh, I'm not hitting F5. 
we're either changing that hotkey or we're going back to somewhere that we like better. Run. Just have key mappings. Let's see. Code preferences, keyboard shortcuts. Okay. Code preferences, keyboard shortcuts. Run. Run, start without debugging. So that was bang, or that was, oh, start debugging, run without debugging. Oh, okay, yeah, so here, does this work? I change it. One existing command has this key binding, can you take me to it? Reload window, yeah, we don't need that. I wanna delete it, how do you delete it? Uh, change, remove key binding. There we go. Ooh, sweet. All right. Where my file go? Don't do that. Oh, it's got a GIF view. Oh, that's interesting. Or diff view. Ah, oh, okay. I know people love VS Code. I just haven't used it yet. Let that get out of there. So, I gotta work now. Nope. That should have worked. What's wrong with this? What am I missing? Why is it read there all the time? Name. Main. Unit test. Main. Right? Come on, I just told you to do that. Why isn't it doing it? Preferences. Come on. Ah, I didn't edit it. Oh, it wouldn't let me overwrite it until I killed the other one. Gotcha, okay. Understood. Oh, okay. It's its own little file thing. I see what's going on. Tracked, untracked. Is in, okay. I hear you. Uh, here, let's save. Let's save this to snake case names. Yeah, that's fine. Um, bum, 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 bum. So, oh, how do we do this? So here, if we run now, is it gonna run? Okay, we ran, cool. What happens if we run this? Does it know what it is? Select environment. Oh, look at that. Here, what if we give it an environment? Is it smart? Oh, come on. You should have picked it up. Which 
environment. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, can I search here? Whoa, whoa. Tag debuggers. Bash debug. A debugger extension for bash scripts using bash db. What is this? They saw some bash db scripts. Bash db now including package. Simple bash db debugger. What is the bash db? I mean, it sounds like a database, right? But a language server for Bash. Bash Beautify. Let's get all kinds of good stuff going in here. Smart Git Bash. Tab nine autocomplete. Bash extension pack. We've got a couple of those. That means they're installed, right? PowerShell. Err. Okay. Shell format. Shell script. Uh, shell check. An extension to use. It all exploded. And then we'll find PowerShell. Do you have PowerShell installed? Okay, yeah. No, I don't. Um, Shell. Uh, I don't. I think I actually want to install PowerShell. That's got very bright all of a sudden. It's probably better for the screen though. Stream, whatever. Bash script snippet. What's this? Learn Bash script name Shellman. Okay, whatever. I'm messing around. Bash theme. Yeah, right. I actually use uh, I use light stuff on uh, on most of my stuff now, especially like so. That's what I use for PyCharm. Um, I haven't switched my terminal over yet because most of the stuff I've been doing is in PyCharm. Um, but I'm actually moving towards more bright stuff, mainly for the screen, because it's easier to read um, and contrasty stuff. But yeah, it's uh, I've gotten used to it. It took a while to get used to it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not. I'm not doing like the developer. Ooh, it's all dark and misty, um, which I've done that a lot too. Um, so and sometimes like at night when I'm programming, when I turn off the lights and I kind of want to like get down into it a little bit, it's like then I like back everything off. But like for now, it's like it's fine. Dark, not so much. Yeah, positive vibes. I try for the positive vibes. Terminal. Okay, I think I, I don't even remember what I was doing here. Um, I just I really haven't messed with uh, script runner. Hang on. What is script runner? Run command line scripts with parameters directly for VS Code. Create customize your own commands to simplify the way of working. Oh, okay, interesting. There's all kinds of stuff here. I love that there's like people competing to make the best tools for developers now. Like Atom's out there and VS Code's out there and PyCharm's out there and like all this other stuff. It's like, cool. Well, I mean, people knew that for a while, like BB Edit for forever and whatever. I, okay, I didn't do that. We just talked about it. <laughs> hey, it's light. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, is this going to run now? That's what I was looking for. I remember what I was trying to do. I was looking for a bash. Bash CLI. No, oh, bash debug. Let's look at bash debug. Bash DB, eh, whatever. I'm just gonna call it and run it. That's fine. Um, so the Python script will just run it because I don't want to screw it anymore. Also,
Uh, I wish I would preview the themes for you. Oop, nope. All right, do you know the name of a theme? Solarized Light, but that's not, it's still not as contra, I, I'm not a fan of Solarized Light. Where am I going? Oh, Control-K, Control-T. Okay, I can remember that. Material theme. Oh, nope. Oops. K, T, there we go. Oh. Quiet light. Yeah. High contrast. Whoa. Oh, that is high contrast. That's actually kind of like 80s sci-fi Tron looking. I actually really like that. <laughs> Whoops. K, T, there we go. Whoops. Okay, get you up there and then T, get you up there, I don't know. Material theme, high contrast, that's not high contrast. They're all dark themes. Community material. Marked under dark material theme. Ooh. It's a little hazy. Oh, mana, this one's, nope, not what I thought it was. I'm not sure there's any light ones in here. Here, I'll just use Solarized. Nope, wrong Solarized. We'll use light for now. I'll play around with them and find some others later. Pale night, ocean, high contrast, darker. Markdown editor. Dark, 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 dark. Dark, 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 dark. Oh, there's some more up here. There we go. Light Visual Studio. What does that look like? Hey, there we go. That's not bad. I think that was it. We'll use that one. There we go. <sighs> I like that, 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 whatever that dark one was though. That was pretty slick looking. That looked like the future from 1980. I love that. I'll, I'll be that will be that will make an appearance on some of these, um, especially as it gets lighter. And I, I want what I want is a better camera that I can have the lights lower in here because it's super bright in the room um, to make this camera see okay. I want a better lower light camera um, so that I can keep it dimmer, be nice. Uh, all right, how do I get out of this? Escape. X. Uh, hello? Go away. I'm gonna get out of it. Click over there. Oh, okay, so it's got, okay, so it's got a sidebar that's kind of always up. Okay, I'm starting to figure it out. I'll look at Bash Debugger at some other point. Um, but Control R works. All right, we're there. Yeah, this doesn't look half bad. Um, so, oh, what are we actually gonna do here? So, Step one is I need to do, let's actually move the snake case file. Oh, can we not drag and drop in here? That kind of sucks. Open, reveal, select, compare, cut. Cut. Paste. Oh, I see what's happening. This one was, sorry, if this one was already lower, shouldn't have been, how do we make that go up there? Does that work? They're in a directory. I don't want this one in the directory. I want this one up. Nope. But I paste it out here. I don't want it inside that directory. Clicking, 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 we're clicking. So that's that. Why can't I move it? Come on, you can do it. Nope, don't do that. 
All right, we're just gonna do it the uh, old fashioned way. I wonder if there's something else up there if I could get to it. What in Snake Case Names, Test Arena. Test Runner, go there. Certainly found it. Sweet. Okay, so in Python, we actually need to, um, Change directory. We need because I need to get into the working directory. Okay, OSCD, cool. F test set one, whatever. It's fine. Du, 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 self should have filled that in. That's all right. This font looks nice too. Um. Oh, yeah, we do want that. Uh, import OS. Test arena, and then sub process run. Nope. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Snake. Case names. Import sub process. There we go. So now failed. Uh, snake case names. No such file directory. Snake case names. What? Sure it is. It's right there. Snake case names. Uh. Now let's see if it didn't actually go. No such file directory, still not there. So this worked, right? So that passed. Because we do this, that should fail, right? Because that directory doesn't exist. Okay, so it hit the directory. Do not know why. Let's keep going over there. From here. Dev, snake case names, test arena. Oh, the test. Why did test runner end up back in there? Not cool. Okay, at least. Oh, that is the one that's being edited. God damn it. Okay, that's what happened. All right, delete, goodbye. Let's try this again. Import uh, process main, so run, there shouldn't be anything there. Everything's okay, cool. Then, Also, how did that, how is it working earlier when it actually made it into the test directory? That shouldn't have happened. So process run. Oh, uh, wait. Is it that it's not executable? No, it says no such file or directory. Does subprocess not, oh, uh, you know what? I'll bet it's not on the path and it doesn't act, it's not actually directory aware. Um, that's what's going on.
So we're going to get the script directory. And then... Test directory is... Scripter slash test R E A R E test arena. But again, how did it know? Uh, we'll just see what happens here. So if we run this, what's going to happen? Snake case name. So it found the file. Wait, did it find the file earlier? It did. It was in there. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to work or not. That doesn't make any sense. Unless it's not executable, and that's what's freaking it out. But why would that give us a no such file or directory. That don't make no sense. Uh, command path is test directory snake, nope. Snake case names. Permission denied. Okay, it's a different error. Uh, oh, actually, I can go here. So, this is a long time just to get stuff set up, but once I know how to do this, I will be able to do it again. Come on, user, execute, snake, case names. All right, what are you gonna do? You gonna work? You are X format error. Okay, that's new. You gotta give it But you gotta give it that, because it doesn't know what to do with it. There we go, here. Okay, so when you're running, yeah, when you're running a thing, okay, that's cool, I got it. Cause I, so to start with, I want this to be in the same directory. And so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna make, I wanna make some files. And so I need files that I'm gonna that should move and files that shouldn't or files yeah actually I'm just gonna well let's start with one. Let's just rename a file. It's tough because I kinda hmm. Actually let's do this. Um because I I wanna be careful. Not to blow that away. Okay, whatever. It's fine. We'll be fine for now. Um, pi touch from path lib import path. Da, da, da. Now that hmm. All right, hang on, we've got this working, but I want to see. If we're in the test directory and we've. Okay, that's literally the thing that's working. Does that work now? No file or directory, how is that possible? I want to understand that.
I feel like it's important to understand that. Uh, file exists. True, file exists. Prove it, make it a different thing, it'll say false. Yep, okay. So that very same name, why does that not work? Giving it a list. Either use the full path to, uh, or the current, or set the current working directory. I did set the current. Like it's in. Oh, okay. So this is independent. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So subprocess run is different. Like it, it's its own. Oh, it's its own process. So it kicks up its own thing. I guess that makes sense. Um, but it's a, oh, wait, wait, hang on. Yeah, it's in test arena. No, so that doesn't make sense. Because if I don't go into that directory, if we see right here, yeah, snake case names. I don't understand. But it sounds like. Does that still work? It does. So if we run our snake case command there, still file not found. How is that possible? I don't understand what's going on. You can't call it directly. You got to do the dot thing. It's not. OK, OK, I got it. So this should still work. I understand what's happening. OK, that's good. I wanted, I was unsure what was going on there. Now I got it. So we get rid of that. We can do that. We can do that. We can do that. Uh, we're getting our scripter. Yeah, so actually now I shouldn't need to do any of this stuff. I can just do all this relative. And this should still fire. Here, good, okay. I knew, so I knew something was weird. Yeah, cause yeah, you can't call it, it's the same thing, right? I mean, uh, test arena, like if I just do Snake case name. You can't call it like that. You gotta do that. I understand. Eventually we put it on the path and you'll be able to do it directly. Um also let me just make sure. No, okay. It's like I didn't build it and call it snake case names, did I? No. Oh wait. Bash completer, completer AWS, AWS command, see that's completer AWS local. Cause I wanna, I wouldn't mind prefacing all my stuff with AWS. Hmm, I gotta think about that. 
because I can just do like if I can just do AWS ta you know you can do AS no AWS commands have dashes in them right I still like the lowercase oh whatever we'll mess with that in a minute uh so here we go. So we need to make some files. We'll start with a file. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Pi. Oh, it was right there. Pi touch a file. We already did the path. Yep. Okay. So we're just gonna be gross with this right now, but that's fine. Um. So go into the test arena. Touch a file. <sighs> Boop, -doo. Um, what we call this? Um, test file one dot txt. Let's just run it, make sure it doesn't crash. Okay, yeah. And then so, and then we're gonna run our command. And then what we want to do is to get the thing to pass. The first thing that should happen is, I mean, this weirdest echo. I don't know what it is. Hello? No, I don't know where it is. Oh, well. um, and it just stopped. Super, no, there it is. So if we're in test arena and we're at file, so the, the thing that I want to do, pi file exists. So after we run our stuff, we're going to look for a file at our desired path. And again, I'm just being gross with this right now. Test file one dot text. So if we run this, that should fail because that file doesn't exist. False is not true. Sweet. That's what we expected. So the simplest thing to do file test test file one, right? Test file one dot text. Run it now. Test passes. Sweet. So we can take this out here. So shameless screen. Um, all right, so now we got something to work with. And but that's gonna pass all the times, which is cool. But we also want to make sure that the other file doesn't exist. Because we need a back up right now to make sure that like the directory is clean. Um, and I'm already thinking like, ooh, I had to like put this in an array because we're gonna want to test a bunch of files, but like slow and steady here. Uh, so self assert false. And we're gonna do, we already moved this into some variables. Original file. One is going to be this. Destination file one is this. And so this is going to fail because we aren't actually moving our, our, like our original test file isn't actually being moved. We're just making a new file. Um, so again, just to do it, here's rm test file one dot text. It's kind of a weird way to set up tests, but Okay, so that's good. We got it. Uh, 
And like, yeah, so as long as it gets... Well, and really what we should do is kind of just because of the way this is running, right? Is we actually want to do, so test originally, the original file is true. And destination file is false. Because we want to make sure like this, this is a full, this is the full test of the state, right? Hopefully that still works. Nope. False is not true. Line 20. Test true original file. Oh, because I'm not making the original file. So I need to make it first. See? Tests are helpful. Uh... Wait, original file one. Oh, okay, that's why, because it's we are we are making it, it just wasn't there yet. So there's that. So I'm gonna just add this. Given this, okay. We gotta watch some order stuff here. So move into the directory. Not sure that's the best way to do that, but it's fine. It's a little gross, but. So move into the directory, set the files that we're looking for. Oh, not happy with this order yet. Define our files, move into the directory, make the first one, verify that the first one exists and the second one doesn't. Run our process, verify that it slipped. Okay, I like that, that's good. And it failed. Wow. But I'm 25. Whoops. Don't know where that came from. I'm 25, false destination file is, oh, we gotta remove, yeah, so we gotta remove it. Um. Pi delete file. Unlink. What is all this stuff? Delete files and folders. Oh, delete files in directory. Okay, click on the wrong thing. Oh, you can just do this to remove. Whatever. Cool. Uh, but it's not always going to be there. So if OS path is file. Destination file, OS, remove destination file. <laughs> this is gross. It works. Right, so there's no, there's no test file to start with. We make it. And you can kind of see it bounce over here, maybe? Nope, it happens too fast. If we don't run sub process, it, it, it's gonna choke, right? We wanna see it fail and die, right? Yeah, so line 31, our original file still exists. And then if we do this, we'll also see, oh, it stops on the first error, I got it. So it stops on the first assertion. And then the other one doesn't exist. Yep, okay, that's cool. Got it. So there's our test suite. Which again, like I can, you can look at this and you can see all the stuff go, but like I'm just, I'm in the headspace of tests these days and really kind of try to practice on them. So this is actually a good one to do. Like, even though I'm not testing Python code, it's still kind of the mechanics of how would you test all this stuff. A little bit weird because you're testing it on the file system, but that's okay. So now we got a test suite behind us. So now we actually make the thing try and work. Um, oh, 
Oh, really? I still, what did I do with that? CLI date modified. Wget file, cert, checklist, wget, reinvent, curl to save file. It's back in October. Lowercase, ooh. Found it. Found it. <laughs> I knew I had it somewhere. I, I took it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I took it. I took it out. I just, I couldn't find it. I didn't find it. No, I found it. Hooray. Lowercase names. Um, and it's actually be called snake case names. Um, All right, so since we know it's gonna need to loop, and we've got most of this code, let's actually go ahead and put a second test in here. So first, how do we commit this? Oh, actually what I should do is, maybe I can file on the root. Is that how you make file the root? Snake case names. Turn names into what am I doing? Snake case. Um, so here's the stuff that it's going to do. I'm always iffy about documentation. Place all uppercase letters with lowercase. Place any white space with underscore. Replace any dashes. Replace anything that's not a letter or number with underscores. Chomp, so there is only ever one underscore. Chomp leading and trailing underscores. A letter, number, or dot. Actually, put this up here as tests. All right. 
And so that's still good. Now what we want to do is actually, I'm going to, oh yeah, I got to commit all this stuff. That's what that whole thing was about. Uh, where's the get go here? Open file, discard changes, stage changes. That's you, probably uncommitted. Stage changes. Okay, stage changes. I gotcha. Cool. Uh, how? Message. Add readme. Okay, that worked. How do we branch? Push point, click, 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 branch. Create branch. Dev. So now we're on dev, right? Where does it tell me that? Changes three, yeah, I gotcha. I do like this diff view, that's kind of cool. Um, where's the time what branch I'm on though? I wanna know that. What is this doing? Toggle view mode. So one of them has a directory and the other one's just a list of files, I guess. Commit, refresh, view actions and more, views. Surely it's gonna tell me what branch I'm on. I don't see it though. Oh, you can loop through changes. That's cool. Open a file, All right? Split editor. Whoa. Double split. Triple split. That keeps happening. I don't know what to do. Oh, this is showing me my terminal showing me I'm on dev, but I think that's because my terminal does that. It doesn't. Where? How? There's gotta be a way to see what branch you're on. I'm about to stop caring about it from now, but still, that seems crazy. Uh, so test file, we actually want to add to get ignore. Okay, that's cool. So is that staged? Oh, you just click it, right? Add, get, ignore. And actually while we're here, so we drop in our get ignore. Nope. Nope. Get ignore, where's get ignore? Where's my main? Oh, I'm sorted wrong. It's not in the place I expected it. I also don't see it. Get a uh, ignore globals. Where is it? Did I name it something different and screw myself up. There, here you go. go whatever changes modified there you go now it's there okay cool whatever we're fine 
Uh, cool. So now what we want to do is actually set this up so that we can do um, test files equals we're going to make a list. And in that list, it's going to be a bunch of dictionaries um, with original that. Destination, that. I really should have done that differently. We'll do that differently. Got that under, we're gonna make a new test thing so that this one stays green. Trying to remember to stay green. There we go. F, test. Full sets, full set one. Should fill that out with itself, which it did. So here's our test set, test files. For test file and test files. Uh, we don't need that, we can just do this. Work. Oh, look at you. Good. Nice. Okay, so we're going to CD into there. Do this one at a time. We're going to hit the original file. Shouldn't matter what we need in this, which is cool because it's gonna clean them up for us. So if we run this, we should see a test file two show up here, right? Oh, that's test file one. Now I'm confused. That did not do what I was expecting. Why isn't test file two there? We're only doing that one specifically. Test file one, what? Oh, failed, no such thing as test arena. Is trying to jump into it all the time. We don't want to do that. We're only going to do that once. Let's try that. There we go. Test file two. Okay, cool. Makes sense. See? Testing. Nice. And our destination file isn't there right now, but that's okay. So we're gonna we're gonna walk through this. And actually I'm gonna get rid I'm gonna just comment this one out. I want it there, but we're gonna comment it out. So if the destination file, so that's gonna delete this one right here. Maybe not because that's the wrong thing to look at. Try again. So I deleted that file. Okay, yeah, so we're making the original file. We're getting rid of the target. Now we're going to make the assertions that they're both good. Which theoretically, I should make this slightly different, but whatever. I really should test. Um, how, do, how do we test that these actually fail? I want to see the test fail. Oh, yeah, so you just flip it. 
So it's false when it's really true. So that's going to bomb. Line 64. True. That's cool. That's how you do that. Okay. Same here. Just to verify that our test is hitting the thing. There's a fail on 65. Sweet. Fail. Uh, false. Forgot the word I was looking for. I still haven't found the word I'm looking for. Um, then we run our process. Oh, it's complaining because it's trying to remove a file that doesn't exist, but that's fine. Um, why is it trying to remove that file? Wait, that's weird. Oh, that's Echo. That's the snake case doing it. I gotcha. And so now... Let's put these in. So the original goes away, and these are both going to fail because we aren't actually running these for test two. Yep. Okay, cool. And then just to prove it, what do we call these? Just two and two? There we go. Okay, sweet. So now we got a now we got a test suite where we can push stuff in and make sure it actually does what we expect it to. Um, and these both like neither one of these have they're both basically the same thing. I'm just I'm, I need to do a loop, so I might as well prove the loop. Or I want that structure in place so I don't have to keep duplicating the thing anywhere. So that's really what that is. Um, so now we can actually try and make it. And the good news is CLI lower. I probably looked right at this a little while ago. All right, check what happens when a pattern is passed. Yeah, so if... All right, we're gonna back, so we've got the test running, but we're gonna back out to just do one because I wanna have just a single thing to mess with. Gotta get. And re so, really, what we need to do is pass. file name we're not just doing it hello how goes it yeah so we need to pass it a file name so right now i'm going to hard code that which might be a bad idea oh yeah so it would just be no no no. actually we don't even have to do that like because it's going into sub process run and it deals with all that stuff for us we just make it a new uh item in the list that, we, that gets passed to it. 
All right, so. This should still pass, I think. Yep, okay. So we're just passing, we're just passing stuff to it. And so the stuff we're passing to it is dollar sign one. And so we should see test file one. Uh, what model is my keyboard? It is, that's an excellent question. I think it's a, yeah, WASD keyboard. It's the model version two with Cherry MX Blue keys. That I think I just unplugged and hit the mic on. Ah. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm looking at where I think I'm going to get. So the I like the the, the keys. Uh, yep, that's it. Correct. Yep. Uh, I'm looking at getting a different keyboard with keys that have a shorter um, strike distance. I don't know what you call it, but the, the depth of the press. Like that's the one thing that I'm a little off with this keyboard on is you got to you have to hit them. You have to press a little farther than I want, but I want something really light because I have to watch out for RSI stuff. Um, but yeah, it's I, I love it. And also, I think I'm probably because I'm doing some of the streaming stuff now, I'm actually probably going to end up getting an RGB keyboard at some point just because, you know, streams. Old school keyboard, right? Yeah. What do you run? Normal size keys? Yeah. I think these are normal size keys, right? Or is there... Oh, help, laptop keys. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, the little, like, mushed in on you. Yeah, that's, uh... Like, I'm not a fan. Also, the... Uh, I've got a, a Mac, an old Mac, and, like, the... The sponginess of the keys doesn't, doesn't do it for me. Um... You know, that's just not my not my favorite, not my bag. I'm not gonna go to war over it, but I'm gonna choose the one that I like. Uh, all right, so we got this. We got our test file. So now I'm gonna largely copy all this stuff that we wrote last time. Because this took a little while to figure out. And I wouldn't necessarily do this through test, like I wouldn't do, I'm not sure how you would do this with TDD. Because we just know, like, I, I'm just looking for a string and making the thing happen. So um, that's it. Oh, LED and animation. Nice. Yeah, I, I, so I've just barely started looking at that stuff because um, I haven't been streaming that long. So I'm still getting my head around it. But and the keyboard, something's changed on the keyboard cam. It's brighter now than it used to be. Um, it used to be really dark. So I bumped something somewhere. Um, but I still think it would be kind of neat to have, you know, that that look or whatever. Uh, what am I doing? So right now what I'm doing is, oh, you, you hate LED animation. Ah, I gotcha. <laughs> you have it. You hate it. 6-1. Uh, so I've got all these MP3 files somewhere. Uh, where are they? They're here that I got from YouTube from their free music library. And I want to read. So I want to run them through another process that makes videos out of them. But before I do that, I want to like update all the names and like lowercase, like I want to lowercase and or um, take all the spaces out of the file names. Um, so I'm just writing a little function and I run into that all the time, and there's different ways to do that. But I'm just writing a little function on for the command line so that I can actually just, you know, do snake case file names slash or star.mp3 and have it just do all of them for me and not have to worry about it. Um, so that's that's what I'm working on, trying to. I did it a while ago, and I couldn't find it, so I started to rebuild it, but then I just found it again. So it's going to go faster. But right now I'm just putting a test case around it because I want to make sure... Like, if I'm moving all these files, I want to make sure that I don't delete files, right? Uh, so the final goal is... Um, I think I've actually got one live. So I've got another piece that I wrote a little while ago that I'm going to loop all these MP3s through it where... Hang on. It goes, it takes an MP3 file, it goes 
and grabs videos from NASA, cuts those videos into pieces, and then reassembles it into a video with the music overlaid on it. And so that's that's the actual end goal. And right now, that's just a little thing to help me because I want to I want to have the MP3s renamed so it's easier for my script to process, basically. Um, so this was the kind of the first one that it goes through, and it just it's they're really disjointed and weird. Like, who knows? But yeah, it seemed like a fun thing to do. So that's uh that's where this is headed in a really weird yak shavy type way. Uh, so it's, I'm really just going to do all of the stuff that YouTube has. So YouTube, like there's, um, I want, I want these MP3s up as videos that I can then play around with when they're videos with some YouTube stuff that I'm thinking about messing with. So really all I'm trying to do is to populate music videos out there that I can actually play with on stream that I won't get copyright struck for. That's kind of that's really kind of what this is all about. But I thought the NASA thing would be fun to do. So that's where uh, that's where that came in. Um, and I've got some other things that I'm looking at, like old art footage or whatever, like old black and white stuff. So I'll probably add that in there, too, and just kind of mess around with it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, correct. So. Um, NASA has a uh, an API for their videos and images that you can go pull videos down from. And so the, the process will be uh, and take one of these, like loop through all of these MP3 files, figure out how long that MP3 file is, go get enough NASA videos to cut little pieces out of to match the length of the video or to, to, to match the length of the music and then stitch it all together into a music video. Um, so it's, that's the, the general, or that, that's the high level view of it. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's taking NASA videos and making music videos out of them because the, the NASA footage is public domain. So I can show it on stream and I don't have to worry about copyright problems and the video and the music that YouTube provides is copyright free so we don't have to worry about audio problems so that that gives me videos that i can play with on stream that i don't have to worry about getting copyright problems with is the is the high level goal of it uh i don't know i don't know who that is probably i'm not the first person to have thought of this is am i gonna know this youtube for video loops oh I don't know this. I've never seen this. I broke it. Oh, there it goes. So is this just loop? Is there music? Oh, cool. That's cool. Seriously, that's really neat. Yeah, so mine's mine's not looping mine's more linear and to start with it's just going to be the videos or just going to be a, like a song length per song but one of the things i'm actually thinking about doing is stitching really long ones together both with soundtracks and without soundtracks so if you just want to like have one in the background that's just all this nasa footage kind of doing its thing um that's i'm going to do that too like i'm going to i think i'm going to set up a separate youtube account for all this stuff just for all the automated videos because I've, I've got all these ideas for all these automated videos just to push up there and you i only make a few videos myself every now and then so like you wouldn't you'd never see them they'd get buried oh yeah cool nice yeah this is cool i i this is my first time i've seen it not sure what's going on there oh just checking 
Um, hey, Animal Crossing. This is cool. That is definitely a bookmark. Uh oh, I broke it. Something's broken. It's angry at me. Hang on. There we go. That's sweet. Yeah, I, uh, whoops. Stay open. Um, main program language. Right now, I'm doing mainly Python. Um, I'm actually not that huge a programmer. Uh, I've been doing programming stuff for a long time, but I'm not like a programmer programmer. Um, but Python's where I'm where I'm at right now. Uh, I've been using it pretty exclusively for like a year. I mean, you do some JavaScript stuff every now and then where you run into that. Um, but yeah, Python, I guess is what I should say. Short and too, too long, didn't read, Python. Um, how about you? Are you a coder? All right, so we got that and reading it. So let's go grab this. So if, so this checks and says if the file exists, then we do all the stuff to it. Otherwise, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna paste all this. Because, so originally that was in a function, but if I use it as a... All right, we're just gonna try it and see what happens. Survey says, broke. Uh -uh. Didn't figure that would work. Uh, so I do, mainly I do meetings these days is what I do. Um, N not really. Uh, so I work with some data analytics stuff, but like mainly I help manage people who are doing the work, but I'm not really a manager. I don't know. My job is hard to describe right now. Um, I'm kind of tasked with going and figuring out stuff. Sometimes that involves programming. Sometimes that doesn't involve programming. Um, like I, I have to we're working on a project right now where I'm having to go through and dig into a bunch of Amazon Web Services stuff. It's not really programming, but you gotta be technical to do it. Like, I don't know. So it's, yeah, I, I just mess around um, with stuff. Is super, I need to come up with a better answer than that. I don't really know what that answer is though, uh, because it's, I don't have a, my, my role is non-traditional basically, um, but it is what it is. What kind of front end work do you do? You like, you have frameworks that you like or? Um, are you, and it's been a long time since I've messed with any of the frameworks or anything. So I don't know what the, I know there are like riot wars about them. So, uh, but I'm not involved in any of that. So speak your mind, speak your peace. I'm okay with anything. Um, as long as you don't know, so, uh, all right. That didn't work at all. So, well, well. Snake case passed too many arguments. No file passed. Oh. Ran fair. No file passed. Ah, interesting. So I picked it up. All right, let's back out and get the green again. So just so we can make sure we're cool and then figure out how to do this step by step. Because normally this stuff I would just test like as a command, like as a bash script. You're just looking at the input and the output, so I mean, I guess we could kind of do that, but I kind of already have it built. All right, so it runs. There we go. Uh, Florida and the United States, uh, depending on which version of from you mean. Um, sunny Florida. Everybody's punching bag, <laughs> not for bad reasons. Um, how about you? Stateside, not stateside. Is it cold? Is it, it's 74 where I am right now. The, I guess a good question is how, what's the temperature? Actually, that might be really mean to say, depending on what the temperature is where you are. But what's the temperature where you are? All 
So that worked. So if E dollar sign one, then echo got file. Else echo no fee. All right, what's I gonna do? Okay, so it's not catching. Snake case, too many arguments. Oh, I wonder if it needs. How do you quote it? So you'd have to go this. Wait. So we're doing an F string with that, and we're going to wrap it in quotes. And then we're going to get the variable. And then we're going to close the variable. We're going to close the double quotes. We're going to close the single quotes. And we're going to take care of the crap that it just threw in there. No way that works. Syntax error. Yeah, I figured. Uh, so that's this. Wait, why didn't that work? That should have worked. Syntax error. F string. Okay, let's back it all the way out. Just do this. So an F string can pass, right? Okay, cool. And then we can put quotes in there, right? Cool. And then in here, we can do a variable of test file original, right? Why the hell is that? Okay, we'll try it the other way. Sign for it, yeah. It's easy to Google where it is. Did it explain? All right. Fair enough. Beautiful building. I've never met anybody from there before. Tomsk? Tomsk? I hope I'm not horribly mispronouncing that. One of the oldest towns. Nice. 410th anniversary in 2014. Wow. The oldest university in Siberia. Oh, that's cool. It's funny. <laughs> 410 years. It's twice as old or whatever. Basically twice as old as the U.S., right? Oh, hey, look, climate charts. Oh, you get cooking. Okay. But you get cold. Average low, record lows, daily means. Okay. Yeah, that's chillier than I get. I've never seen these before. This is cool. It's a neat little data of this. that that's neat watch university is very cool <laughs> lots of public transportation pictures <laughs> nice we don't have that here at all I'm not going to know any of these people. I am uncultured. That's Flick. Well, I hope, uh, let's see, we're November. Average low. I hope you're keeping warm because that's, that's kind of chilly. <laughs> I don't really like this visualization. Like this, I just like this visualization. Visualization. 
like the heat coming down and then precipitation. Like you could, you could do just this part of it too, and that'd be pretty slick, right? So like, just this. Uh, screenshots. Yeah, see, that's a neat... That gives you a good idea of the... Of the temperature stuff. I like that. That's a good one. Good job, Wikipedia. You guys made some good stuff out of weird colors. Uh... I should. I 100% should know. I spelled it wrong. M E N D E. Oh, no, I didn't. that wrong but Google's gonna fix me chemist okay formulating periodic law oh okay right yes this yeah Mendeleev this is who you're talking about right <laughs> yeah yeah, so I do the like I like the visualization stuff. Um, like I got a, a bunch of, the, of Viz stuff that I love. Um, the and working with data and seeing it and doing all other stuff. Like I like so I work with people who are like the hardcore data scientists who only like conceptualize the numbers and think in the numbers and stuff. And so they're, like they're on one side. And then I also work with people who are like straight up designers that are on the other side. And I'm like somewhere in the, like, I'm not, I'm not good at either one of them, but I have interest in both of them. Um, and so that's another part of my role is sometimes being a communication point between really technical people and really non-technical people um, and trying to walk the bridge basically. Um, that's actually not a bad way to do that. Still working on the description. I haven't come up with that yet. Sweet. Uh, okay, so why isn't this working though? That should totally work, right? So if we just pass, if we just copy and paste the actual this in here, does that work? See, that worked. Why wouldn't that? Oh, 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 because there's a, I uh, got it. Because there's a, that. Um, original file equal so this should work because it's got it's the single quote was messing with it so now this shouldn't fail right all right well it didn't syntax error out so we're good there we got that Still says line three, too many arguments. That don't make no sense. Because we're in the list. If we run it without that. Oh, now it's saying got file? How? I don't understand what's happening. Hang on. Um, oh, 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 I must, this must be the difference of it being a function versus the difference of it running. How do you?
Bash script uh, argument. How to use command line arguments in Bash script. Yeah, you're between our subprogrammers too, yeah. Yeah, it's... I, I really... I envy people who are really good at either of them, like really good at programming or really good at design. But lots of the very few of those people can do both. And so I prefer to not be as good at either one of them, but be able to kind of be in both worlds. Is this namespace a third party lib for Python? Um, it is built in. Uh, the, it gives you, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's built in. No, it is. Yeah, it's built in. Um, uh, this one, you mean? Yeah. And it lets, so everything here is actually built in. All of these are. I haven't installed anything on this. Uh, I haven't done any pip installs for this one. Um, but it's super handy. I, there's a bunch in OS and in Pathlib. I find myself whenever I'm doing anything on the on the with a file system like those things come up all the time. Um, and I've got little things like here's how you touch a file, here's how you remove a file, whatever, all that stuff. So and then is a file that one's super handy, right? Is making sure something's there or not. Uh, math and CS, yeah, that's just in there, right? Is that what you're saying? That it just exists. Um, yeah, same, same thing. You gotta in Python, right? You gotta call the things to load them, but they're in the sta uh, standard library, I think is what they call that. That didn't help. There we go. Yeah, SH. So why didn't, why, so this should be. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's, I don't know how this is calling it. I'll bet this is calling it. So the, we're actually about to do another one. Um, External execute your external command. I'll bet or not I'll bet, but I'm wondering. Yeah, so if we do system, so there's another one. OS system. I want to see if this responds differently. And if we pass that, the original name, what does this do? Whoops. Okay, it did an error. Oh, hang on, let's do this, put it, put it in quotes. Crap, true is not false. Expected one. Oh, because it put two quotes there. How about this? What's I gotta do? Okay, that didn't explode. Okay, so this is that the sub process run is doing a weird thing with it. This OS system is actually just what you do on the command line, so we're sticking with that. Um, okay, cool. Base common library. Okay, cool. So many actions just paste main music theme from Rocky. <laughs> um, so amusingly, I am semi-familiar with Django. That's actually the other thing that I'm working on is uh, I'm working through the Django for Beginners book right now because uh, I keep I've got a little um, 
this is a local website that I have that just has like um, tools and stuff on it that I do various whatever things with. Like it's where I have all my GIFs so I can shoot GIFs pretty quickly. This is a bunch of PHP pages. I'm actually going to move it into Django basically. So I'm, I'm in the process of learning Django right now. Um, I, I played with it a while ago and I liked it. I just, it didn't take and I wasn't in a position where I could really kind of dig into it. Now I'm more like that. So um, I'm going to bounce into it and see what it is. I'm, so far, I'm really liking it. Like all the stuff that you get with it is really impressive to me. Um, the I did Ruby on Rails for a little while. And the thing that always freaked me out about that was like having to make a decision about what user authentication package you were going to use because it wasn't built into Rails. And like, that's such a fundamental thing. It should be in there to me. And then so like Django, they're like, yeah, it's built in. I'm like, I'm a fan. Um, so for this thing, there's no, there, there's no admin or auth. It's just straight to PHP and it's just running on my local host and it's not, it's not broadcast out. Like you can't get to it if you're on the outside world talking to my Mac or even if you're on the same network, it's not, it's firewall off. Um, so I, I don't really need the authorization stuff for mine, but I like knowing it's there and I may actually mess with it at some point. The other one that I've heard is the, the Django REST API um, is supposed to be really good. And I've heard a bunch of people talk about how it and React re work really well together. Um, <laughs> come back over the next month or two and we'll figure that out because that's uh, that's what I'm going to mess with, basically. Um, uh, the, the Django stuff, once I'm a little bit more into it, that's one of the things I'm going to start streaming is just messing around with Django, rebuilding the site. Um, but I've also got some idea for some API stuff and I want to, and I want to explore react cause everybody talks about it. So I want to see what it's all about. Um, so I'll probably look at it as well and see, uh, see how it goes or not. I probably, I like, I, I will, like, I will be looking at it. Is that still can't figure out where the echo is coming from. Um, All right, so let's see if. Okay, so this is passing now. Like it's not exploding on syntax error. So it's passing the data. It still says too many arguments though, which seems weird because if we just run it. Okay, so got, it says got file again, but that shouldn't happen because item one. Oh, but wait, 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 it said that on the command line too, didn't it? It said that when we were here, right? If we just did this, snake case got file, right? So it's still, yeah, I, I, I played around with Flask a little bit too, but like if I'm gonna do something with a language like that, I'm going to go for Django just because it's the full featured one, even if it takes a little bit longer to learn. My thinking is, and and sometimes this thinking is not the right thinking, but some but it's the way that my brain works is like, I'd rather know the full thing than just the little ones. And, but there's times when that's not right. It really should depend on what you're trying to do. But for me, it's, it's also largely about learning the stuff. So that's the one that I want to learn. Um, but that may not be the best thinking, but that's where I'm headed. So I'll do Django, you do Flask. We'll meet in the middle. How about that? We can talk. <laughs> or we can both do Django. Uh, at some point, I may mess with Flask. Who knows? Actually, I'm sure I will at some point, right? It's the tools that are available. I like messing around with tools that are available and seeing what happens. Um... Oh, uh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. If E destination file. E 
E. True if file exists. I don't understand then. So how... Well, here, let's do this. Echo that. Oops, that's not gonna work. I'll try this. Actually, let's try it in here. It didn't echo anything. Because nothing got passed. But so if we echo this and do that, we get the ASDF. Okay, so that's one. Wait a minute. If exists nothing, echo here. Fee. Didn't like it. Oh, probably needs to be double quotes. Still didn't like it. Syntax error. Your token. Oh, if then. Needs a then. I don't remember bash. But if we do that. It finds it. But there's nothing there. So we're echoing it. And then we're saying if we find it. I am confused about what's happening here. Got it. So, if, so, okay, I think I understand what's happening. S maybe? I feel like I don't totally have an idea what's going on. Cause like, arguments passed to a script, right. Now let's run the script. Yeah, but see, this is, Bash dash E empty dollars on one. Whoops. Nope. Following a simple bash script or positional learning program was used, but for no reason. Dash C option. If the C option is present, the commands read from the string. Right. If there are arguments after the string, there are assigned positional values there. Uh, the emphasis here is on is in the original. Which is nice since it's a bit surprising. We can still see it with this, which would be that. Uh interesting. Okay. This is not helpful. It's interesting, not helpful. Can I unset one? How to test for null or empty. Find batch script example. We show some of the ways how to check for empty or null. Okay, so let's try this.
Empty, not empty. Okay, let's try Z. Uh, where do we go? There we are. And it put it in quotes too. Okay, so that's probably a smart play. Dash Z quote. Uh, is it because I wasn't in quotes that whole time? No, it's a, that doesn't make sense. Because it was still, it was working. If it's empty. So this should print out because zero is empty, because one's empty. And there's nothing in it. Okay. I don't know where the other one was came. I was looking for a file to exist, but like clearly something was weird with that. Somehow it was saying a file existed even though there was nothing on the variable. Don't get that at all. Like, cause that's what's happening, right? I'm learning about bash today. So if E one, then echo getting tired exists one. Actually, that's a really good test right there. Yeah, exists, but there's nothing in it. If it's empty, confused oh z is for empty so z is empty right, right sorry exists but it's empty <sighs> that's super crazy watch out for dash e and dash the empty m p t y note that dash e will return true if a variable is empty So I just make notes about stuff like this because I may not remember that. I may remember something about it, but I won't necessarily remember the thing or the details. So this will help me so I don't have to, like, because it took me a few jumps on Stack Overflow to get to that. This I'll just zip right into it, hopefully. That was super confusing.
Originally tried to use dash E instead of dash Z, but that can't, but that returns false positives. Just in case. Sweet, so now we can actually get back to trying to make this thing work. Uh, so let's go to our test runner. Let's run this, this, boom, 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 boom. All right, run, are we green? We're green, sweet. And now, hopefully, can we pass this, whoops. I don't care about using it yet. I just want to pass it. Yes. Okay, that passed and it didn't explode. We're in better shape. Oh, I need to get another note about that. Um, sometimes I get in a... Well, I learned a bunch of new stuff and it's like... Tricky. Uh, well, wait a minute. So is that... That may not have been the problem. Okay, because we just, we saw the problem, we saw the same thing. All right, so hang on. Are we printing something here? Why is there a dot there? I don't know where that dot's coming from, but we're just gonna leave it be. All right, so there's that. And now F that quotes that original file, close, close go. So is this going to work? Nope. Oh, why did that work? Maybe it doesn't need, maybe it just auto quotes itself. That'd be cool. Does it auto quote itself? Nope. Oh, was, was it auto quote itself? Let's try that. Nope. Buffer size must be an integer. Oh, I'm outside. God. I was outside the, uh, Proper thingamabob, quote, bracket, brace, whatever those things are. Okay, this should work. Got it, I understand the world again. I don't know how you'd go through, like I'm sure there's a way to like undequote those or whatever, but um, I'm not worried about that right now. That works. Uh, okay, so there's our original file. <laughs> it's one of those long way. It, it's figuring all this stuff out, right? I mean, that's part of it. Like uh, the the next one of these will be way easier. All right. So everything's running. So, oh, let's not actually do, I'm trying to figure out what the best way to do this stuff is. Oh, cause are, do you get return values from that? That would be the other thing to check. So does it pick up, if I do, Echo herf. Status equals that. 
I may be getting ahead of myself here, but. We should see it twice now, right? Oh, right. Uh, so it prints. I need to I need to catch its arguments. Um This is cool actually. What I'm building is a little Python framework for doing bash testing and I want to do more bash scripts, so this will give me some confidence in what I'm doing. Um at least I hope it will. Yeah, so I need to see I'm gonna need to see a couple different things. I need to see I need to see the status coming back. So I need to see that the files moved. And then I need to see status messages. Yeah. Also, the thing I should look at, I just realized bash db, what was bash db? Is there a bash debugger? I'm nervous about source for source forge these days. Flask for the win. I need to get back and look at that. I did part of a little online course with it. What am I looking at? I'm looking at the wrong things. Getting tired, which makes sense because it was a long day. See, I feel like there's a whole bunch. I'm about to go down a rabbit hole. Is what about about to happen? Bash debugging project lets you set breakpoints, inspect variables, perform a backtrace, and step through a batch script line by line. In other words, it provides features you expect in C++. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, this is interesting. This is super interesting. I'm not going to dig it up tonight, but that is another project to look at. Uh, I think I got a debugging tag, don't I? Nope. Just do a dev. Velcro, you got any active fla flask? Active flask? It's like active something? I don't know. Stuff up these days? I'm not even, uh, I'm, my brain is fried. This one. <sighs> you know what I should do? I'm trying to figure out how to get more of my stuff. Snippets. Like I got a bunch of stuff in this in this thing, but like I, I feel like there's a little I could like organize a little bit differently and also publish more of it, which would also help me make more of it, like a nice little feedback loop. Um, I'm still still working through that. As I get my Django site going, that will probably be a thing that I do. Um, where did I want to go? So I'm not gonna worry. So okay. So I'm not gonna worry about status messages right now. That's fine. Because I know I know the way that I need to do that. You have to pull standard error and standard out in through this process through a pipe to get it to run to get it through sub process to then be able to ac access it. And I've got the code to do that, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now because the first thing I want to do is get the file to move and. I, I don't need to worry about the actual text output of the thing. If it starts when the file exists, 
and then after you're on the process, the old one doesn't exist and the new one does exist. Like, that is... I have high confidence that the thing will have worked at that point. So... Let me just make sure... So we're passing... So let me just do this. I'm not going to put any conditional scenario or any of that stuff right now. We're just going to we're just going to run we're going to run knowing that the test is doing the things to do and then we can actually back into the conditional stuff that we need to have. So we just echo one. Whoops. Really need to figure out how to make that happen. Whoops. That was totally the wrong thing to do. Does that work? Nope. Is that? Nope. Nope. Why can't I switch tabs? That'd be nice. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Test file one. Okay, so we got it, right? So now, instead of doing this hard-coded remove and touch, we can just do this. Move one, two. So if we run this, it should still be green. Except we're not. No such file or directory. Test file one text. That's literally what's right here. We moved in. Oh, see, okay. I'm now confused again. Uh, it's a bash script, so we can just run bash in here and see what's happening. It's in the test arena. Rename file, test file one. Am I not making this in the right place? So we moved into it. You're touching the file, which should make it. We see it's true. That needs to be there. No such file or directory. How is that possible? is right here. I'm um, looking at it. Testify one, like it literally got made by the same script. Oh, this is gonna be one of those weird pathing things or on path things or whatever. Um, did that work there? Maybe. If we put in full paths, what happens? That didn't work either, okay. Oh, I wonder if the quotes are throwing it and you shouldn't put quotes around it in if you're passing the variable. That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense but we'll try it. What is going on? Echo, test file one, usage. So I forgot how to use MV. 
Okay, let's try it manually. What am I missing? See, that works. Oh. Why is the simple stuff so hard? What am I missing? All right, so this is us echoing test file one. Here's us putting that in the same quotation marks and running the file. It's the same, it's the same variable. I mean, so we change into the directory. And li oh, so literally right here, it says no such file or directory. So if I copy that piece of text out and I paste it right here and I run it again, it finds it and it passes it. And again, if I take that away from it. I do not understand that at all. Oh my god, I don't understand it. Bash variable doesn't work as MV file. Can't use this variable in an MV command. Hello. A command of bash is parsed in several places. The pass that decides whether globbing should be performed as occurred before the pass that expands the variables. Once the variables are expanded, they're candidate for globbing. But that decision, but the decision of no globbing is required to remain. But a value is dangerous if you don't control the values, right? Yeah, don't use a val. I was hoping that it would the first answer would get me there. Solved. Can't use variable in. Ba 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 ba. I see the first use, but it gives me an error. Oh no, unfortunately not. I tried that before. Cat prints the contents of file, so if line contained that, then cat would look file contains that and prints contents. Yako. For new situation, you'll need echo just line. Let's have a folder called new folder from the password to save the file like this. Uh, we get a new folder. Double quotes are important if file names might contain white space. I'm using that. Well, see, yeah, so he's on the same thing I'm having. While reader, while I file contender, check your name. Renaming works like a charm, but you know how to read the file text copy, uh, whatever. I figured out the main thing was missing was quotes for the variables. Here's what I used. <sighs> see? Wait, it's not something stupid like. I gotta have quotes around that one, is it? Um, it has to be something silly, right? Oh. 
I don't understand. Something's, something's funky. Like, there's no spaces. No such file or directory. One.txt. That's all quoted. Okay. I mean, it's right, it's right here. I do not understand this at all. Wait a minute, what if we don't add quotes there? Oh my God. It was sitting in the quotes. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Test file one. Goodness gracious, this has been tricky. Uh, why is it not working now? Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me that it doesn't work with spaces in it. Is file original is file original sub process so original file we touch it we make it it's right there and now it's giving us usage because it's not in quotes I got it let's do this <laughs> that took an hour good lord So now, after all that, we can run a move command. This little dot throws me. Um, and we should be able to put all our tests in, back in place. And have everything go. So if we run this. We're all cool. And just to prove it, oh, actually, yeah, okay, so now we've got our target. And like, just to just to prove that it fails, if the file name's wrong, there's a failure. So now we get, now we need to get to this as our destination. And this is where it's weird, because there's not really, really, it's not like a, it's a black box thing. So you just fire one thing at it and something else comes back. Um, there's not, but you gotta do, potentially do a whole bunch of work. There's not like stages of the work. Um, so I guess, I mean, you could do that by like kicking stuff out independently or just printing it or whatever and just looking at it, but there's not, yeah, I don't know, whatever, you get the point. Um, so CLI, snake case. All right, so this was the thing that we came up with earlier. I think it took me longer to figure out this test framework than it did to actually come up with this piece of code.
Oops, front. How, how about Echo? That's what your destination file looks like here. Well, it looks mighty like test file one right there, doesn't it? And we're done. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, so there's that's the command that does the snake case. Um, all right, I got, I got a good test harness on that. I like that. Um, Because the other thing I can test that I want to test, so I'm not doing editor of development over that because I, I already had all that stuff in there and like whatever, it's fine. Um, but I do want to kind of throw a couple other tests at it. So test file. And so one thing I want to do is space that, that like that. And I still want that to be test file one. Uh, to do, make sure you don't overwrite existing files. Wow, I'm getting tired. Oh, I'm hiding it. There, that's actually how I feel a little bit right now. I should have, oh, that hadn't been up there the whole time. I've been hiding it. I gotta set up my uh, screen a little bit better. I think I'm gonna get a good, like, Black Friday, I might get one of those widescreen monitors. Cause I don't, I only use one, but I keep pushing against it. So, um, we'll see. To do, um, no, first, oh, first monitor. <laughs> Just a, a replacement monitor for the one. Um, I, I, my laptop's over there, so like I kind of see it and throw stuff to it over the time, but most of the time I just use the one. And it's not, I, I don't really do web dev anymore as much, so I don't need to have the two, like it's not as important to be able to see a browser in the code window. Um, but I'm starting to do a little bit of that stuff again. Plus it would just be nice to have a bigger screen, I guess. Uh, deal with glob patterns. Uh, deal with directory paths. Decide if you want to do a pre flight check. Yes, you do. Make sure all files will move without clobbering or cobbling themselves. Clobbering names. Clobbering their names. Themselves with the same name. Yeah, so this is like I, I like this. This is like I'm gonna have a nice, nice little test framework set up here because I've got a, maybe a couple of these I want to try, but I also like the idea of just having like this this framework out there too. Um, so that's good. I mean, it works. Oh yeah, yeah so new test. So let's see what this what this does. Is that gonna pass? It passed. Yep, test file two, there we go. Uh, we can delete this. Yes. And also, where's our git ignore?
Test arena star.txt. We don't need any of those. Uh, I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh yeah, it's like a little, there's a little plus. How do you tell it you want to commit that? I'm just gonna commit everything, whatever. I'm not sure I like getting here. Ignore test.txt files. No, I don't think I committed that yet. Oh yeah, that was the whole thing. Um, initial renaming is working. So another one would be, oh, we should actually name that two because it is two. Still work? Still happy, all right. Let's do three and see if this one goes. And we're gonna put a space up front. I don't think this one's gonna work. And a space at the end. And it's two spaces in the middle. I think this one fails. Fail. Uh, assertion error false is not true. No. Um, yeah, you can actually add messages, right? Check, test file two, yep. Oh wait, two. Oh, yeah, yeah, that could, cause it needs to be a three. Shit, maybe it worked. Still did not work, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause the, you can see right here. Uh, so it shot, so it, mushed all the spaces together, so that's good. Um, actually, let's do this. So I want that one to pass, which I think it will. Yelp. And then let's do one with the names up front. Actually call it leading space before name. Space before and after, uh, before name. Spaces, plural, we'll do two. And then, that one's gonna be a little harder to do, I think, cause we're gonna have to watch Oh, maybe not. Mm. So there's some weird cases, right? So you could have space something space dot whatever space dot whatever dot whatever. Where would you, where would you do those?
I think you'd do this, right? I mean, it's getting kind of weird at that point, but like, I mean, how about a space? Like, that's a weird use case, but like, I'm afraid to solve it. We'll solve it. So that fails because we're going to move this up just so I can get them both here. Original file, destination file. Actually not green right now. I should get back to green before I mess with all that stuff so I can be confident that I stay green. Okay, cool. Original file, we'll do the original ones first. Since we're here, original. I just wanna have this for F strings if I need it. And also it's already here, so I'm already using it. I wanna get consistent. And then destination file goes here, goes here. And that's really the booger that I wanted to fix. So now, Still green. Falls not true, check. Okay, so this is the one. So yeah, so let's see if we can actually make do something tonight instead of just working with tests. Not that working with tests isn't a thing, I get it, but like, you know, stuff. Uh, so, Okay, let's, before we do that, let's do this. There's probably a better way to pull that out so you can send them as individual test cases instead of doing the for loop inside. Whatever, I'm, I'll play with that at some other point. Um, so said, so we're echoing one. And we're going to said, and we're substituting dashes with lowercases. We're substituting spaces with underscores. We're going to enhanced regular expression, finding multiple of those and moving them, multiple underscores and moving it to a single. And then we're translating uppercase to lowercase. So possibly if we do said, E substitute, I need to get that out of there a little bit. Substitute, substitute, start of string slash s plus with nothing. Doesn't really need to be global. And then do that. It's funny, there's really no reason I shouldn't be doing this as 
Like, there's no reason this needs to be one line. <laughs> it just, I don't know, kind of started that way and it's continued that way. Maybe I'll make it go not into one line later. But see, now I don't know what I screwed up. Yeah, this is where it would be helpful to have test cases, so being able to run a specific test case instead of these. Yeah. Okay, that's another project. Oops. Oh, crap, see. Okay, there we go. So a smarter way to do that would be to do this. So we're gonna take that out, this should fail. Okay. Now, instead of editing that one, let's make a new one. Now let's go here, set up our sed. See what happens. Still failed. Did not catch it. Test file three. What? Oh, space before name. So. Oh, well, start with. Oh, I hope that's not it. Actually, I hope that is it. Sorry. I was backwards there. This would be awesome if it's actually working and I just have the test wrong. Which is another reason you should do that, is you should, I don't know, that's a weird one to test. Like file system tests are just odd. I don't have a good head around it yet. Still failed. So it's here and it's still got the spaces before name. So it still has the space in front of it. So this clearly doesn't work. Said match first character space. Said match first character. There's also a lowercase e in there. I want to try the lowercase e and just see what that does. There's like there's different regular expression engines that get pulled into this. And so let's just do this real quick. Make sure it passes. Yeah, so that passes when there's no spaces there. So that's okay. That's actually a good test. What good way to test it? Or a good way to test the test. Verify the test is doing a thing. Bash substitute first character in every line. So, uh, see? Oh, maybe you don't need the dash E. There's a white space character in each line. You can try that. Yes. Match white space characters. That minus there looks kind of weird. I've also replaced here dot with one. I want to edit that later. Or edit that some other point. That could be clearer. I'm not going to do it right now though because I can't focus my eyes. So if we take that out, 
and we just let it go straight. That'd be funny if that works. It did not work. If. If. So that should be the start. Now I don't understand regular expressions. And none of the rest of these should have any effect on it. It's the start of the string with spaces. What if we do a star? That shouldn't matter. Oh, maybe it's different. Let's see if this works. Nope. Let's see if this works. Nope. Let's see if this works. Whoops, that did not work. I don't know what the hell just happened right there. Those things were touching. All right. This doesn't make any sense, but we're gonna try it anyways. We're gonna move this back here. And we're gonna switch to looking for any number of underscores at the start. And somehow that worked. I don't know why the spaces didn't work. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. But hey, this works. So there's that's there's that. Okay. Um move leading spaces under scores. I'm actually get rid of this one now. I don't know if I want to tackle this one right now. Yeah, I'm gonna need to do both these at the same time. I knew my head that had space. Um, yeah, this isn't a bad little framework. I need to pull. Yeah, so you could test. There's got to be a way to basically. So if the test set runs, you could call another test, right? You have to be able to. It just automatic like this thing is automatically going through and calling them, but you should be able to like somehow fire up another one and do multiple tests. Like put your build your for loop in here and then call it out because that way I don't know. It feels weird to go through this for loop. I don't know. Maybe it shouldn't. Who knows? Um, but this is mostly there. And then I'm gonna build another one that's gonna. I'm not going to do this upper and lowercase thing. Oh, so I can do some other things, right? So it's not a two consider. We're going to do that. Oops, don't do that. We want that one. Space after name. 
I'm confusing myself. That goes there. This. goes here and also that's definitely the origin that's just gonna confuse me all right last thing I have the tired to let me just put eyes on some of these and see if there's anything else that sticks out oh there's like an and character in there oh you know what would be the smarter thing to do would be to do this boop boop now I've got some things to play with There's absolutely commands out there that do this, probably built into this editor. I'm going to delete that. Anything else weird going on in here? There's an interesting one with a question mark. <sighs> Funny, removing question mark makes it a very different song. Single quote. It's a weird, dis like, you got to do something with it. I don't want to leave it. Ampersand again. numbers should be straightforward but still check them the one two sixers hey congrats Right on. Cheers to you with a, don't worry about the fact that it's a mostly empty sprite, but you know, cheers. Good on you, man. Where'd, uh, how long did it take you? I think you've been working on that for a minute, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> My pleasure, anytime. Uh. I, I only request that when you become a billionaire from your new web app that you, you know, you remember the small people uh, and, you know, like them, subscribe or whatever. I think that's YouTube. Uh, no, that's awesome. 
Congratulations. Do you have a next thing lined up, or what's your uh, what's your path for path forward? Or are you just like, give me a minute, let me just revel in the glory now, which is understandable. That was kind of weird. Like, hey, I just did a great thing. Great. What are you gonna do next? Give me a minute. I'm gonna sit here for a minute and enjoy this. Oh, free cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think we talked. I've been seeing that more and more. So like. Hey, every, everything you can do, right? Keep it working. Oops, that's not gonna work. Oh my goodness, I think with a hearty congratulations to you, Velcro, I'm going to tap out because I am definitely, definitely hitting the tired. But let me walk through these real quick. See if I see anything else real quick while I'm in it. Because if I'm in it, I'm in it, right? I already got parens. Eh, let's do parens twice because these aren't at the front. Shouldn't matter, but still deal with setting it actually up later. Prints again, that's fine. Dashes are all over the place, that's fine. Ooh, here we this one. There's a that character. We're just gonna do that for right now. Ooh. Uh whatever those things are. Plosive. Exclamation. The smarter person would have just written a little script that said, if not one of these characters, let me know. Which I'm going to do basically a blacklist anyways. So, But I do want to verify that it really does work and it really does clear things out. Oh, here's one with, art, with periods in different places. That's all kinds of good stuff right there. That's a good one to test. This, this name looks like it was designed by somebody who was trying to come up with a test for a weird file name. I applaud them for their effort. Oh, I'm only in the L's. I shouldn't have done this. I should have gone to bed. Gasping. Oh, I thought I just saw a pipe, but it's an eye. I feel like we're, oh, comma, look at you. Hello, comma, right as I was about to say, I feel like we're close. Question mark. I think we already got one of those, but we're here. And it also had the other thing. Accent mark, what are those things called? Umants? There's a word for them, like ligatures? I can't remember. Yeah, because I have to make the decision I, I should leave those characters in there. Like, that's still a letter. Like, even though it's not in my alphabet. Um, but, like, the ampersands and stuff. Like, those are... Or not amp yeah, ampersands and anything that's not, like, a ligature for a letter goes away. So, cool. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's only almost been identified. Yes. Yes. But I have become old. And so, and tired. And I don't know, old, I guess. It's weird. I, I used to be a night owl, and now I'm less so. I don't know, it's probably the lithium. Um, 
the yeah it's, it's it's time to it's time to head out i uh and weirdly i've i've hit the old age thing of like i start waking up earlier in the mornings not early but like i wake up and get up and do stuff before the alarm goes off super weird super weird like you know it's coming like it happens to everybody but like now it's kind of happening to me super weird anyways congrats again uh looking forward to seeing what you build and we'll uh we'll catch you next time in the meantime take care see y'all